Hi everyone, we're gonna uh, go through A to Z of installing everything we need for Comp 1010 and uh, uh, writing our first program in both Eclipse and Visual Studio Code. And here with us is G who, I mean, I'm G already, but we've got G on or Melody who's kindly helping us with this video. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to search on Google or whatever uh, uh, search engine that you guys are using for Java SE download. Uh, SE stands for standard edition. It's the same as JDK or Java development kit. Uh, can you go back one step, please? And now you'll see that there is a link for Java SE downloads Oracle technology because uh, Java was bought over by Oracle from Sun Microsystems. So we'll go there. And it's going to tell you uh, that there is a link for, the current version is 16.0.2. So we highly recommend that you download the latest version. Uh, it has a link for JDK download. That's Java development kit. It's the same as Java standard edition. So while here it says, Java SE development kit, they still haven't come up with uh, unambiguous terminology yet. So here, depending on your operating system, if you're on Mac, use Mac OS installer, which is the DMG file. And if you're on Windows, uh, depending on whether it's a 64-bit architecture or a 32-bit architecture, it will probably tell you the right installer. And we just use the 64-bit installer for our purpose. It will download the file. It's about 150 megabytes on a fast internet connection, probably 20 seconds on a slow one a minute, maybe. Now, once that file is downloaded, we are going to double click on that and install it. It's on its way. No worries. All good. Uh, I, didn't know, I didn't know that you can drag and drop uh, partially install, partially downloaded files. Oh, I didn't know that too. Yeah. I, um, I learn something new every day. Also be careful about what mirror you're downloading it from. Uh, it should be fine in this case. Okay. Anyway, uh, give your admin rights and the installer will pop up. Now here it says uh, C drive slash program files slash Java slash JDK hyphen 16.0.2. Now that's the default path. And I suggest that you keep this path because Eclipse and Visual Studio Code often refer to this path. We go next. And it says successfully installed. And that's fine and close. Now, once we have Java standard edition, the next one is to install the integrated development environment, which is either Eclipse or Visual Studio Code. So again, we're gonna to go to our search engine and search for Eclipse IDE. And it, the first thing that comes up is eclipse.org slash IDE. Uh, it has desktop IDs. On the top right side, you'll see there is a download link with orange background. We click on that. And uh, the latest version is Eclipse IDE 2021-06. Now, it's important to download the latest uh, Eclipse IDE. Uh, the reason is because the latest IDE ships with JUnit 5.5 or 5.6, which we will need for our uh, JUnit testing. So, okay, you download that file. Uh, it, it asks for donations. Obviously you don't have to donate and that file will be downloaded. <clears throat> Almost there. Uh, 
Okay, now Eclipse installer is there. So we're gonna run that. Now, when the Eclipse installer runs, there are a couple of uh, packages that it gives you options for. We are gonna use the first one, which is Eclipse IDE for Java developers. Now here you will see, uh, now this is an important screen because it will ask you where Java resides. And you will also notice that it automatically has determined that Java is at C drive, program files, Java, JDK-16.0.2. So that's good. So that's what we're gonna do. And it also chooses, tells you where do you want to install Eclipse, which is C drive slash user slash unknown, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so uh, software user agreement, uh, you can read it if you want, accept. Install is pretty quick, takes less than 30 seconds to run completely. So now that uh, your Eclipse ID for Java developers has been downloaded and installed, you can launch it. So all you need for writing Java programs is already there. And now we can proceed. Now here, the first time you choose a workspace, it's like a project area. And you can decide uh, to have a dedicated workspace. So here it's chosen C drive slash user slash unknown slash Eclipse hyphen workspace. That's the default workspace it chooses. If you're happy with that, you can choose that and enable the button that says use this as default and do not ask again. But G, you can choose a different one if you want. No, we'll just leave it. That's fine. And launch and don't ask again because otherwise every time it boots up, it's going to ask you again. Uh, I probably won't be using this IDE on Windows. <laughs> Next one, uh, you can see uh, that on the top right side, there's a play button and it says hide the welcome screen on the top right side. Yep, that's the one. And it takes you uh, to Eclipse. Nowadays, they've already added a donate screen. You can close the donate screen. Um, it says donate cross. Yep, that's it. So this is uh, what you want your Eclipse to look like. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new Java project. Uh, and it's quite intuitive. So you can see there's an option already, create a Java project. Uh, we're going to name our project Hello World. Now, what G has already done very, uh, uh, very much correctly, he's, he's named it starting with a lowercase. There's no rule associated with that, but by convention, projects start with a lowercase. It also says, use the execution environment JRE Java SE-16. And because it already detects that that's the Java that resides on your computer and that should be used. Now, one thing that you should be doing is you should disable the box or uncheck the box that says create module info.java file. And you can uh, click on finish directly. Now that creates a hello world project. And inside that there is a JRE system library folder. So it contains all the libraries which are in Java's standard library set. And that includes math and system and such libraries. It also contains a folder, which is SRC. And that's uh, a short form for source. So the source folder or the source code is in that. You can right click on source folder or SRC and create a new class. And this class should be named in upper cases uh, and it's again camel cased. So if you say hello world, it starts with an, uh, uh, an uppercase H. Now what G has done already, he's, he's checked the box that says, I would like to include the stub public static void main. Uh, if you want to run a Java file, if you want the Java file to be an executable file, then you choose to include public static void main whose parameter is a string array. The name of the array doesn't matter because it's a formal parameter. You can change it as you want, but check that if you want the program to run and finish. 
to finish? That's right. And you'll see that Eclipse does everything for you. It creates the, the file uh, structure and it creates a public static void main. Before we proceed any further, we'll do one more thing. Uh, we'll press uh, Control A. I don't think we even have to press Control A. And we'll, we'll press Control Plus. Oh, sorry, I'm used to my Vim controls. No worries. Control plus. Control plus. And control plus increases the font size. What we'll also do is uh, uh, some people like the dark mode better. So we're going to change the mode as well. We go to window, preferences. I'm sure it goes in appearance as well, but at the very top, general, appearance. And you can see the theme can be changed from light to dark. And there's your dark theme. So you can change the theme as well. All right, uh, I can see you really like Vim. On line number seven, which is inside our main function, we're gonna write our code. So uh, first thing that we should do is we should uh, add tabs so that the control is inside the main function. So the indentation is correct. And you can see that uh, G is already writing uh, system.out.print and in or print ln, that's fine. Is it? No, so the out and print ln are in lower cases. System.out.print ln in round brackets, you can write whatever you want. So let's see what our welcome message is. It's hello world backslash n. Now the backslash n is a new line character or a carriage return. You don't need to include that because you've already used print ln. So the ln changes the line automatically. Oh, I will fix that. And we save this. Uh, actually, instead of saving it, just run the program by using the, pl the play button, which is on the top right side. I'm just going to quickly circle it. This Thank one you. right here. Perfect. Now, when you play it, it will give you an option or a confirmation dialog. Please make sure that you choose the box that says always save resources before launching. Uh, a lot of times students do that every single time throughout the semester and it's just a waste of time. And you can see our, uh, our code uh, shows up at the bottom. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna request remote control from G uh, so that I can write a few lines of code uh, inside this function. And I'll, okay. So here I've got my main function, but I'm also gonna write another function. I'm gonna write a very simple function and let's call it public static int highest. Now this highest function accepts three integers. I'm gonna name them A, B, and C. But when I expand on the left-hand side in the package explorer, you see that it says highest int comma int comma int. So in reality, that's the signature. It expects three integers. Java doesn't see that it's A, B, and C. Java sees that there are three integers. So the name of the variables is for our purpose only. I'm gonna write this. First of all, we'll check if A is at least as big as both B and C. If that's the case, we will return A immediately. Now, if the control reaches line number 16, uh, can you tell me what is guaranteed if we reach line number 16? It means that A is not at least more than both B and C, because if it were, we, we would have already returned the control. So it's between B and C, which means we can check if B is more than equal to C, we return B. Similarly, what's guaranteed if the control reaches line number 23, that it can only be C. So we will return C unconditionally. Uh, so that's a really nice program to understand control flow. And now we will use this in our main function. We will create variables x equals 10, y equals 20, 
and z equals 20 as well. We will then say int. Uh, you need to finish the line, line okay. number 10. Thank you. Uh, you will see that because I didn't finish the line with a semicolon, I get this red cross sign indicating a compilation error, sorry, a compilation error. So we're gonna move there and put a semicolon. Highest is, now this is what we discourage, having a variable which is the same name as function. So we're gonna name this variable max equals, we'll call this function highest. And I'll do something a little fun bit funky. We'll say x plus y, y minus z, and z times y divided by x. There's a reason I'm doing this, and it's to explain how actual parameters are passed into formal parameters. Finally, we are going to display our max value. First of all, let's run this program to see what the output is going to be, or what we can do is we can try and do a manual trace. X plus Y is 10 plus 20, which is 30. That's the value that's copied into A. Y minus Z is 20 minus 20, so the value zero is copied into B. And Z multiplied by Y divided by X is 20 multiplied by 20 divided by 10. So 20 times 20 is 400 divided by 10 is 40. 40 is copied into C. So we got 30, zero and 40. You will notice that 30 is more than equal to zero, yes. But 30 is not more than equal to 40. So it's true and false, which is false. So it skips the conditional block, goes to line 25. Zero is more than equal to 40 is false. So it skips the conditional block and goes to line number 31 and it gives, returns the correct answer, which is 41, oh, sorry, 40. So when I run my program, you can see my output is 40. So this kind of understanding of control flow where you can, at least for simple programs, determine the output of the program is quite useful. Uh, and yes, that's our first program in Java. What we'll also do is inside the Hello World package, we are going to create a new class. I'm going to name it client and run this. Uh, sorry, and include public static void main. And over here, I'll just write this. Uh, print line. Class. No worries. We can always fix these minor issues. And print line and class spelling. Okay, so now when I run my program, you can see that it's actually the file that's running. So it's not necessarily the project that you're running, but the file that is in picture is running. Again, I can double click on hello world and I can run that file instead. So that's how we use Java with Eclipse. I'm going to relinquish the control and give it back to G. And next, we're going to try and do the same using Visual Studio Code. Oh, I forgot to ask, what if we wanted to get plugins like a Vim plugin on Eclipse? There is a Vim plugin for those of you who like using Vim. So just Google for Vim plugin for Eclipse and it can be freely uh, done. It can be done easily, but it's not in the domain of this video. So we're going to move on to Visual Studio Code. Dang it. <laughs> Uh, we'll go to, and on your search engine, just search for. Oh, wait, sorry. That's okay. Well, we can just crop this out. So you'll go to your search engine, search for Visual Studio Code. And it's code.visualstudio.com. Download for Windows. Okay, it's up, you can talk. It's up, fantastic. So we can double click on Visual Studio Code uh, file, accept the agreement and choose the path 
uh, it says, okay, whatever. And then uh, the menu folder is Visual Studio Code. If you want, there's an option to not create it at the bottom left as well, up to you. Next, uh, add path, which is good. And next. So basically just keep the standard options and it's fine. Is there anything else we need to download? Uh, no, uh, there is an extension that we'll be downloading, but that can be done from inside Visual Studio Code. Uh, also, as a as a heavy price to pay for help for getting Melody's help for this video, I have to change my profile picture from Messi to Lewandowski on Island for the first week of the session. All right, so this is Visual Studio Code. Now you'll see a cog wheel on the bottom left side. That's the one that you're gonna click and choose extensions. On the top right, on the top left side, you see search extensions and you're gonna search for Java extension pack. Uh, and there is a start extension. You're gonna choose that and install it. Wait. Okay, this That's isn't it. in the video, but what about JUnit? It's included in Java extension pack. Earlier, it used to be a different one, but if you see uh, the fourth, fifth or sixth uh, one from the top, it says Java test runner. Let me annotate on your screen. So Java test runner. So that's the one for JUnit testing. Oh. And that is a part of Java extension pack now. Earlier, it, did, it, it, it wasn't the case, but now it is. Oh, okay. Okay, so that has been installed, which is good. Now, Visual Studio Code uh, processes Java projects slightly differently from Eclipse. For Visual Studio Code, it's all about keeping things in the same folder. You'll see on the bottom, sorry, on the top left side, there is a folder icon. And just above that, yep. And we're gonna open folder. And we're gonna create a new folder if you want in here or inside desktop, wait a second. On the top left corner, you can see organize and new folder. Just to the right of organize, there is new folder there. We're gonna name it uh, hello world again and select that folder. Uh, trust the authors, yes, I trust the authors and close the welcome screen. Okay. Now in us, in here, you can add a new file. So can you expand hello world as well? Okay. Uh, slowly please uh, expand hello world where it says drop down. Okay, now keep it there. You'll see there are four options. <laughs> no, don't, don't. Oh, okay. this yeah. bit, the top, okay. sorry. So now the leftmost one is create a new file. The second leftmost is create a new folder and refresh and whatever. The first one is new file. We're gonna create a new file and we're gonna name it uh, with uppercase H because now please notice that file name doesn't have to be the same as the folder name. So instead of hello world, let's name it something different. Uh, let's name it uh, melody.java with an uppercase M. Again, it's not disallowed, but it's just convention that you start with an uppercase. Now, this is the good part about Visual Studio Code. I mean, of course, Eclipse did everything for you from scratch where it generated the public class and inside that generated public static void main, but it's not too difficult in Visual Studio Code either. Before we go there, can you close the welcome panel? The right, yep, that's the one. So you can see more. Okay, now type in class, all lower cases. And you'll see the second option with a square and enter. And you can see that it generates public class Melody automatically. Now in here, again, what Melody has done is he's moved one tab forward, which is good. And type main, correct? And you can see again, there is an option for autocomplete. And can you get rid of this main? And we'll do it slowly one more time. 
Okay, we tap forward and type main and we choose the option which has a square against it, which is the first one. And it automatically generates public static void main. Inside that, you can type whatever you want for system.out.println. I'm sure there's a, I, I think there's a, a shortcut for that, but I've never used it, so I don't remember what it is. All right, so you've typed in a command and the command is good. There is no red line, there is no uh, problem. Uh, and Visual Studio Code has a slightly different way of indicating problems, which I'll talk about in a second. But if you run the program now, and there's an option for run just above public static void main. You can see it says run or debug. And there's also an option on the top right corner with that play button. So here it gives you a bit of uh, uh, <laughs> junk. And then at the bottom line, it says hello world. Now I haven't been able to figure out a way to get rid of that whole uh, uh, verbatim output that it has. So if someone figures it out, please feel free to email me. Now what we'll do is we'll deliberately add a syntactical error by getting rid of that semicolon at the end of line six. What we'll also do is, uh, can you go to that folder icon on the top left corner? Yep. Okay, now you'll see that melody.java in open editors, the font uh, color has changed to red. So let me annotate on that. You can see over here, it has changed to red font and that's indicating that there is a syntactical error in your program. So we're gonna fix our program and add a semicolon at, that, at the end of that line and save our program. And you can see that now the font color has changed back to white, indicating there is no error. On line number seven, let's add a variable declaration. So create any variable of your choice and initialize it to a value if you want. And we're gonna leave it at that. And you'll see that the font color of melody.java has changed to yellow. So this indicates a warning. And the warning is that the variable is never being used. So warnings mean that your program will still run. It just means that there are some variables not being used or some functions not being called. So that's it basically. So that's how you install Java, Eclipse, and Visual Studio Code. I mean, play around with both Visual Studio Code and Eclipse and see which one you like better. There's another one, uh, uh, NetBeans. Uh, uh, you can try that as well, IntelliJ NetBeans or JetBrains, whatever. You can try that as well. And yeah, stick to whatever you like. So that's how we install and set up our programming environment, including programming language and IDE. In another video, we're gonna see how, how we import projects and how we write JUnit tests as well. Thank you very much. And thank you, uh, G, for helping us with this. Okay.